WTXL ABC 27's Christine Souders is on a journey to find stories and individuals that inspire us all. Do you know a difference maker? Email WTXL with your nominee. And every first Friday, I'll share their story. Good job. It's those words of encouragement that motivates these athletes to jump, run, and compete in Special Olympics. To see their faces when they get the medals and the acceptance, that makes it all worth it. Second and first. 18 year old Dalton Browning has been on the Taylor County team for six years now, and he knows his routine like the back of his hand. I try to do my best. But that air of confidence wasn't always there, says Dalton's grandmother. Well, he was very quiet, very shy. He, he wouldn't hardly talk to anyone. He was just very non-social. That changed after two years of being on the team. He was talking to everybody and doing everything that everybody else was doing. So it's just been amazing. Coaching him all the way, this woman, Leslie Sunderland. County games, area games, and the state sends and lets us know who makes it to state. She spends countless hours busing dozens of athletes to events across state and coaching weekly in the gym. Leslie Sunderland is a constant, always cheering from the sidelines. And Leslie says she puts in all of those hours just so she can see her athletes reach their goals. I feel like we're trying to teach them to get them ready for the real world too. Dalton has even made plans to attend college. Had they not come in his life, I don't know what to do. That support system, that team, oh, an extended family. We're a big family, that's right. Yeah, yeah. we're a big family. When you come into Special Olympics, we're not just an organization. In Taylor County, they all know their family. A lot of the athletes call me mom or auntie. Leslie Sunderland says she loves them like her own kids. Well now, it's their turn to be her cheerleader. She cares about everybody. Her the best coach. She is the best. They made me want to, to make the world a better place. There's a too much hate in the world. And with them, they have unconditional love. And I wish everybody would have that. On and off the gym mat, Leslie Sutherland and her team Show we all can make a difference, and that's why Leslie Sutherland is this month's Difference Maker. Walking in, I got two more baked ziti's. Both on the menu today at Hope Community there. Center in Tallahassee, baked ziti and burgers cooked to order. Helping in the kitchen is Marcus Farrow. He is a student in Refire, a culinary training program for people with felony convictions. You got to live with it for the rest of your life. Farrow was sentenced to four months for identification fraud. After his release, Farrow, a single dad of three, applied for 10 jobs, had six interviews. I had a felony on my background and they couldn't hire me. With three mouths to feed, he needed a job. Refire is a kitchen term. It means to correct a mistake. So we're getting these individuals through our program, giving them the skills they need, and allowing them to correct the mistakes they've made with their lives and, and move forward in a, in a different direction so that we can break the cycle of recidivism. Rebecca Kelly Manders, who also goes by Chef Rebecca, founded Refire with Big Bad Homeless Coalition. It's a grassroots program, completely funded by donations, and it's at no cost to the students. Everybody has done something, and you either got caught or you didn't. This accepted me for who I was, and regardless of the background. Reginald Smith is part of the first group to go through the pilot class. Smith says he's learned a lot from Chef Rebecca about working in a kitchen. Food safety, and then technique. And people really seem to like the food. Taste better than I make. <laughs> Rebecca Kelly Mander, she runs a tight ship here for the Refire Culinary Program. Her students are here for eight weeks during the program, four times a week, and also they serve three meals a day. The kitchen is one of the most forgiving places. Right. Chef Rebecca knows firsthand how hard it is to get a job with a felony on your record. I've been clean and sober for 
20 years now, and I wouldn't make those same decisions today, but I still have to answer to them. And she says it costs her less to teach 20 individuals over an eight-week course than it does to house one individual in a prison for one year. It's better for our tax dollars to not be spent on housing individuals in prison, and it's better that we have more contributing members in our community. She can't fix the criminal justice system, but she can help these students to succeed and graduate from the ReFire program. I'm just doing what, what the right thing to do is. I was just incredibly proud. Also proud, these kids who got to see Dad graduate. The sky's the limit. I'm very hopeful for the future. Someone else can believe in you, even when you don't believe in yourself. All four are now food safety certified. And the icing on the cake, they all have jobs. We need to allow them to refire their lives, you know, correct that mistake and move forward and, and just be the best person that we know that they can be. And that's what makes Rebecca Kelly Manders January's Difference Maker. For WTXL ABC 27, I'm Christine Sounders. He did good. Oh, he picked it out himself. Life is full of surprises. For Deborah Pace, it was in this scenic park where she and her now husband celebrated their engagement. But before Deborah could walk down the aisle, 2014, another turn of events. October 20th. This time, I went downstairs to get a drink. It wasn't a welcome surprise. Suddenly, I couldn't breathe. Deborah came to the hospital thinking she was having an asthma attack. Eight hours later, she found herself on the operating table. She woke up to the people who saved her life. I was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? I, I was thinking I was just having an asthma attack, so all I needed was a breathing treatment, and I'd be on my way. Deborah had three blocked arteries. She was likely going to die without some intervention. The only recourse was to go to emergency surgery. That emergency operation, triple bypass surgery. Dr. Jeffrey Snyder had to act quickly. Many times these high-risk situations don't have a good alternative, and hers was that situation. Deborah says it was the fast thinking of the physicians at Capitol Regional that saved her life. Thank God that Dr. Snyder was there. It was a slow recovery and an emotional one. It's because of the grace of God that I'm still here a recovery others in her shoes never experienced. There were other people that had surgery that day. And out of the four people that had, had surgery, I'm the only one that's still here. Here in these exam rooms, Deborah spent thousands of hours and minutes of her life. Our only goal was wedding day. She made a bet with her doctors and nursing staff. I didn't want to walk into my wedding on a walker. I wanted to walk in to meet my future husband. She did. And in the same year, Dr. Snyder put in her pacemaker, calling it her safety net. Now, three years later, they meet again. Oh, hello, stranger. How are you? I'm doing good. You're looking good. It sure is good to I'm see you. I'm looking good, thanks to you. <laughs> Glad to do it. Oh, yeah. How you feeling these days? He even does a quick checkup. Look, scar healed real good. Everything's hidden real Yeah, that's good. beautiful. Today, Deborah's heart is operating at 20%, but the defibrillator allows her not to worry as much. A simple asthma attack. The thought never crossed Deborah's mind. It could be her heart. Don't be afraid to go to the doctor. Please go. Dr. Snyder not only made a difference in Deborah's life, but he's making a difference for others who too may find themselves needing his safety net. That's the most rewarding thing about what I do, knowing that I was able to help them to be here. That's why Dr. Jeffrey Snyder is a difference maker.